Hello everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods, uh, back today with the review of the Anycubic Photon. Um, now I have used probably about six of these machines now, this this is being the sixth one, um, and uh, this one, my, like the others I've had, are Amazon Returns, but they still work as normal. So just a uh, little heads up that if things look off like this knob, this is not a stock knob, this is a resin printed one, um, that's why. So without further ado, let's get into the review and uh, give you my insights and thoughts on the Anycubic Photon. So to start off, as most of you may or may not know, the Anycubic Photon is probably one of the largest LCD SLA um, MSLA, I should say, um, resin printers out there. They have a huge community. Uh, photonsters.org has tons of information to help you get started, whether it be resin exposure settings, software, um, calibrating resin, even if like you don't know the resin settings or it's not on that list that's provided. Um, they do offer a, uh, a great exposure um, or calibration test for the exposure to figure out um, a good variable on where you should start printing. So um, I have printed quite a few things with the Photon. This one I've, I've only printed a handful of things with right now, um, but I have been using it throughout, you know, a couple months now, various different models. Again, they're, they're all the same style Photon or no different. Um, so this one, as you can see, it's a metal frame, uh, very nice, solid construction. Uh, there's the LCD screen. I'm not, I'm not going to power this thing up because it's getting ready to be shipped out, but um, the LCD screen is pretty basic. You got three menus on the front here, one for printing, one for settings, and then just one for the system. Um, so pretty straightforward uh, setup for the LCD screen. Uh, it is touchscreen, obviously. Um, you have your knob here. This is a lift up cover, uh, which, you know, depending on what you're looking for, uh, I, I've come to find out that there's two, two types of people that are in the resin printing community. Some of them like the flip top, some of them like the pop off top where this entire piece comes off and it's just the bottom here and this is all exposed. Um, me personally, I can really care less as long as the printer works. And really, that's what the Anycubic Photon does. Um, I have never really had too many failures with the Photon. Um, it's been a pretty good machine. As long as you keep it level, you are going to have a great printing experience. Um, I know these regular Photons do suffer from the Z-axis height issue, uh, much like my Elegoo Mars had suffered terribly. Uh, I was printing about a millimeter off. Thankfully, all the units that I've had for the Photon, um, they've had a little bit, but not anything major. It's usually like uh, 0.2 millimeter off or whatever. Um, so it, it's very, very minuscule. And uh, obviously, if you're printing anything with supports, it basically takes that all away. So you're not going to have a, a major issue with it. Um, so one thing that I like about this design for the Photon is the build plate is really nice because it is a square design inside here. That is a square design there. So when you're done printing, you could just go ahead and take it and put it on the side there, and there you go. You got an automatic drip plate. Now I wish it was angled so it can drip off the one corner um, like my other printers have, but you know what? That works just as well because I can leave it there for a day or so and let it drip, and by the time I get back, it'll be fine. And let's say I got something that pulls um, resin on the other side. Well, I could just come over here and flip it around and have it drip out the other side. So we can have it drip uh, any side that we want to. And that's really nice to have. That's a nice feature because usually you have to print a mount or something that, um, uh, you know, you, you have to add on to get it to do something of that sort. So that's... That's a nice feature right out of the box. Um, 
the other thing um, that's nice to have about this is, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, there's a little fan behind here. Let's, uh, let's actually take out the vat here so you can kind of see it a little better. Take that out too. So as you can see, there's a fan. Um, I believe this is a probably 40 millimeter fan, possibly 30. I'll go with 40 though, right off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So it's a, a nice sizable fan that uh, has some carb carbon filtration system. Um, I'll be honest, I think it works partial of the time. Um, a lot of people do disable this because in my opinion, it, it's, it works okay. Um, so it, it causes more sound noise than it does help you with things. But if, if you're someone who is very, very um, prone to gases and, and little minute changes in weather conditions and, and um, you know, the, the pollution and stuff like that, then I do suggest keeping this on because it does help just that little bit. It, it may not be as good as some things, but, uh, you know, it is there to help you out. So that is one nice thing to have on that. Um, so I do uh, really like that design. Um, again, the, the other thing that's nice about this is this, this is a really structurally solid printer. Uh, like I said, this is all metal casing with uh, some UV uh, light uh, um, blocking panels. Even though those are kind of so-so, um, obviously you can't have it in direct sunlight, um, but it's it does a good job with, you know, an LED light or, or what have you, regular lights. Um, so that's pretty good. You have your standard LCD screen in here. This can be replaced with pretty much any one. Um, I forget the exact model of it, but for the most part, the Anycubic Photon, the Elegoo Mars, the Creality uh, LD002R, um, I think even the longer Orange 30, and uh, the Quiddy Tech and, and the Epax X1, uh, those pretty much all use the same type of screen. So if you're worried about ever getting replacement screens, you don't necessarily have to go to any cubic to uh, to get a replacement screen. But I, I know how some people are, you know, you're, you're a stickler for keeping with the company. That's perfectly fine. Uh, the same can go for resin. Resin, you don't need any special type of resin. You don't have to go out and buy any cubic resin. Um, in fact, what I was printing with this earlier uh, was eSun resin. Um, I've been using that. I, I do distribution with them. So um, I tend to use a lot of various types of resin, and that just happened to be a translucent eSun resin. Um, so that's, uh, that's another good thing about these printers is that you can use whatever you want as long as it's a uh, LCD um, or SLA um, resin that's 405 newton meters. As long as it's within those specs, anything of that spec should work on this printer with no problems. Again, you might have to do some calibration settings or uh, again, use the documentation that is up there on photonsters.org. Um, again, that's, that's a great place for any information, any issues you have. Um, and like, a, a you know, like I said, I've had several of these machines and they've never, ever given me an issue. Every single one is printed right off the bat. Um, no problems with literally anything. Um, no broken screens, no um, issues with the Z-axis, no popping, no, no nothing of that. Um, the firmware has been fine. Excuse me. Everything's been pretty good. So, um, this is a really, really nice starter printer. Uh, personally... If you're looking to get into resin printing, this is pretty much your best bang for your buck, in my opinion. And the reason being is because you have the community behind it. There's tons of information out there, and um, it's cheap. Uh, as of reviewing this video, uh, it is currently listed at two thirty nine on Amazon. So, and that's a pretty good price. Uh, you got a, a printing volume of one hundred and fifteen millimeters by 65 millimeters by 155 millimeters. So you got your build plate is 115 by 65 and your Z height is 155. Um, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, there are upgrades to uh, add more stability to this if you do ever happen to have problems. Uh, there is a uh, UK uh, guy out there who 
basically made a dual Z rod, or I'm sorry, a dual dual Z linear rail upgrade. There we go. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, so if you ever have issues with that, you can go ahead and do the upgrade on this and it makes this printer go to a whole nother level. So, uh, I think they're roughly about $150, give or take, I could be wrong. Um, uh, but still you add $150 onto this and you're getting into a whole nother level. That's like six, $700 resin printers, um, in terms of what it can do. So there, there's a lot of things that you can do with it, um, and that's basically what I think is the reason why this is uh, the best entry-level resin printer that you can get your hands on. And, and really, that, that goes out 100% to the Photonsters, um, and those guys just keep working on this thing all the time. Like, there's always new things going on over there. Uh, not that I'm trying to plug them or anything. I, I, I don't visit them too much, but when I ever need anything, I definitely go right to there because it literally has everything that I need to know, um, about this, uh, this printer. So, um, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Uh, I mean, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them below. Um, I'll show off a couple prints here right now, uh, just to show you how it printed. So we'll put that back in there, put that on there. We'll close this up. Oh, and uh, just in case you guys wanted to know, this is about 16 inches tall. Uh, I don't exactly know how wide it is. Let's take a camera here. So it's about, we'll, get, we'll call it nine inches. So 16 by nine by nine. So very, very small profile, very, nice to have the only downfall with that is yeah it's 16 inches but when you fold it out it's more like 24 inches so um just take into mind that you know you have that so here's a couple prints just really quick um this was for a customer i originally printed this flat so as you can see there is some um extra additional resin that had cured onto the bottom of the uh I guess chin. This is a little miniature hedgehog, but you can see the detail that's on here. It's very, very nice. It's very fine. You can see every little point. It's very sharp. So, I mean, these are almost dangerous to play with. Um, this is a secondary one that I angled at uh, about 45%, 40, 45 degrees. Sorry, not 45%. Um, with some supports, and I used uh, uh, Prusa Slicer to do those supports. I exported the file as STL with um, with the bed um, supports with the yeah with the plate and supports. It, it's called, um, and then I threw it into Sheet Two Box, sliced it up on a Photon file, put it on a USB. It prints, and it printed exactly the way that it was supposed to be. Uh, there's a little nub on the back here, but again, that's kind of from the support, so we'll we'll take that off in a little while. But uh, that's how it's supposed to look compared to that. So as you can see, there's a little bit of extra resin on the bottom there where this one does not. It just has some nubbing uh, from the support structure. But again, they turned out almost identical. So uh, really, really nice prints that come out of here. Um, another one that I printed are some buttons. So I do a lot of stuff with retro gaming and uh, I'm trying to come out with a new product for an existing product that's on the market called the Retro Flag GPI case. Um, and a lot of people have been asking me about Super Famicom buttons. Basically it's red, green, yellow, um, and blue. Uh, so I just did a test print with uh, eSun Translucent, and I threw on some Montana Gold um, uh, UV blocking, um, God, I can't think of the name of it, um, basically like a clear coat. And so I threw it on there, and I, then I threw it in the Anycubic wash station uh, and washed it up and got it all ready. And uh, these came out amazing, like perfect. So um, I have yet to test them out, but uh, you can clearly see that they are, they're good to go. Um, there shouldn't really have any issues with them testing. 
and uh, they these printed at 0.5 all these items. So just your standard resin settings. Um, and again, I used the um, the settings that photonsters.org had for eSun uh, clear resin. And I based it off that, and I, I pretty much took that profile, threw it on here, and uh, sliced it up, and it worked perfect, as you can see. So um, maybe not printing flat. We might have to tune it a little bit if we're going to do some flat surfaces. But uh, if we're doing anything with support structures, it, it's beautiful. 100% uh, works the way that it's intended. So... Again, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them uh, down below. Uh, I can't really leave any um, links to the STL files here because they're customer prints and they're custom prints that are not available uh, to the open um, public. So sorry about that, but I will leave a link to, down below, an affiliate link for um, to purchase the Anycubic Photon. Um, if you guys think this is something for you, uh, you can go ahead and, and ask me about it and I'll try and do my best to answer anything that you need about it. Um, but like I said, this is probably your best bang for your buck if you're getting into resin printing for the first time. So uh, until next time, happy printing, guys.